This presentation is about the role of green hydrogen in the transformation of the steel industry. And uh, yeah, the question is, why do we talk about steel? Steel is a very essential uh, material, it's a, a building block of our civilization. Uh, it is produced in huge quantities, uh, as you can see here, uh, and is built on iron uh, as an uh, element um, with, with other alloys. Uh, but steel is also a very dirty material in the sense that it is producing uh, almost 8% of the uh, global greenhouse gas emissions and a third of all industrial emissions. China is producing half of the world's steel uh, and is uh, obviously a, a dominant player in the, in the steel uh, production business. Uh, in the future that will change, it will be stable and even declining uh, in China and it will increase in India. So India will be the, the upcoming uh, steel nation in the next 20-30 uh, years. How do we make steel? Uh, steel is made uh, in the process which you can see here on the right side. This is iron ore plus coal, which is uh, fed into a blast furnace. And uh, the blast furnace produces liquid iron, which is converted into steel in the basic oxygen furnace or the converter. On the other hand, you can also uh, recycle steel. Steel is uh, a material which can be recycled multiple times. And this is done in an electric arc furnace. The electric arc furnace uses electric energy to, to, uh, to, to make new steel, so to say. When we look at the um, carbon uh, uh, emissions, the primary route is uh, the problematic part of this process. It produces more than two tons of CO2 uh, for one ton of steel, uh, whereas the, the process with, via the electric arc furnace produces only 0.3 tons of CO2 per ton of steel, which is obviously depending also on the, uh, the carbon footprint of the electricity, which goes into the electric arc furnace. So you might ask, why don't we produce more uh, steel from scrap? Uh, the answer is very simple. There is not enough scrap available. So the scrap is a traded product um, that will change in the future with more scrap being available. So when we look into the future, the steel consumption uh, at constant uh, steel consumption per capita will rise from now 1.9 billion tons per year to 2.2 billion tons per, per year in 2050, approximately. And uh, as I said, the scrap uh, route will increase. It will uh, almost double to 900 million tons. And also the direct uh, reduced iron production will increase uh, from uh, now 120 to 600 million tons per year. And the primary basic oxygen furnace route based on the coal uh, process will, uh, will be reduced accordingly. Um, there's different iron ores which you can use to make steel, primary steel. Um, the direct shipping ores, for example, hematite, uh, is going into the blast furnace. The blast furnace can digest a wide range of different qualities of iron ore. Uh, and to produce uh, liquid, liquid iron. On the other hand, for the DRI processes, which are done in shaft furnaces, which you can see below, uh, they use iron ore pellets, which is a processed ore, mostly made from magnetite, because this is a, an ore which can be uh, beneficiated by its uh, magnetic purposes. Uh, and these DRI processes, they are different in the sense that they uh, produce um, a solid iron, uh, which has to be liquefied in, uh, in, in the aggregates, which you can see on the right side. This is the electric smelting furnace, uh, which is operating on a continuous basis. And uh, below you see the electric arc furnace, uh, which is a, a batch-wise operating uh, furnace. So the, the H2 green steel uh, uh, process route is shown uh, below, here on the bottom. Uh, the, a DRI process for an existing steel plant, which is a brownfield project like Thyssen Group Steel, for example, in Europe, uh, is shown in the middle. So they, they would use an electric smelting furnace. So again, DRI is a solid sponge iron. It is not liquid. You can see, see it uh, on the image uh, um, below here. It is a, a solid product at six or 700 degrees C, which can be charged directly into the furnace. 
uh, or it can be also hot briquetted uh, to, to, to produce HBI or hot briquetted iron and can be shipped to other places where steel is made. When you look at the energy demand, you see uh, a decreasing energy demand, uh, starting with coal on the right side, going down to hydrogen on the left, uh, on the right side, sorry. And um, it uh, is uh, obviously a process which uses uh, more electric energy, the more natural gas or hydrogen you uh, use to make iron, because you have to have the second step of the electric smelting process. So that needs electric energy. This is why the green part, the electricity part is rising and obviously hydrogen plays a role in the hydrogen based uh, process. When you look at the uh, CO2 um, per ton of steel, uh, we come down from the more than two tons uh, to 0.3 to 0.5 tons per steel when we use natural gas or hydrogen. How do we do this uh, in the shaft furnace? Uh, you can operate it with uh, natural gas on the, on, on the one hand and with hydrogen which I show later. So what, what we are doing here is we use uh, natural gas, put it into a reformer uh, and produce the uh, reducing gas which consists of CO and H2 and uh, put this into the furnace. And then we take the oxygen away from the iron or pellets which is uh, iron oxide uh, to produce iron which is Fe only. And the top gas which is exiting the furnace on the top of the uh, shaft is uh, consisting of CO2 and H2O which is water. In a, in a steam uh, form, so to say. And this is, can also be uh, recycled partly or partly it goes to the, to the stack. So when you look at these processes, we have two, uh, two different reactions. Uh, one is uh, the iron oxide in combination with the carbon oxide. And the other one is the iron oxide with the hydrogen. Uh, both produce iron. The only problem is that we produce CO2 with the carbon and uh, only water, so to say, with the, uh, with the uh, hydrogen. <clears throat> so in the end, what we want to do is we want to get rid of the uh, carbon uh, monoxide and use only the iron oxide. Huh? The problem is um, that uh, the process uh, of carbon is exothermic and the one with hydrogen is endothermic so uh, they, they have a good balance to keep the process going at a constant temperature when we use natural gas. This is um, a little bit different when we use hydrogen only uh, because what we are doing here is we, we supply hydrogen gas to the shaft only, we produce water only which can be recycled again so to say into the electrolyzer because the electrolyzer needs water to produce hydrogen and we use a preheater to add additional sensible heat to the process. That means we have to heat up the hydrogen, otherwise the temperature in the process would go down and uh, the process would stop. And we need approximately 50 to 70 kilo of hydrogen for one ton of iron. This is how it looks in practice. So you see on the left side um, a, a, a tower, which is uh, basically uh, <coughs> containing the DRI shaft and the on the floor you see the reformer which produces the CO and H2 from natural gas and on the right side you see uh, also a typical DRI shaft uh, which is uh, here in the assembly stage. When you look at the electrolyzer capacity which we need to produce at least I would say 50% of the clean steel scenarios which are uh, on the board today, this is just an assumption, we would uh, produce 85 million tons of green hydrogen per year in uh, approximately in the 2040s and that would require approximately five tons of hydrogen, five million tons of hydrogen per year. For that we would use approximately 35 to 50 gigawatt electrolyzer capacity to produce this amount of hydrogen. You would uh, ask the question why 35 to 50, why is this span? You know, this is uh, very simply explained. 35 would be uh, enough if you have a very stable, continuous supply of uh, power, electrical power to the electrolyzers, for example, via hydro power. And 50 gigawatt you would uh, use when you have uh, only solar and wind, which, uh, which are resulting in less full load hours of operation per year. So we talked about hydrogen, we talked also about uh, green hydrogen and e electrical energy which we need to produce this hydrogen. 
uh, electricity consumption uh, globally is 28,000 terawatt hours approximately. Only 12% is made by uh, solar and wind currently. And the rest of the low carbon uh, sources is hydropower, which cannot be expanded, and nuclear, which can be expanded only slowly to double or triple the amount um, which uh, we have today. And when you look at the energy requirements to produce these 85 million tons of iron, green iron, uh, we would use 275 terawatt hours, which is a substantial share. I would say almost 8% or so of the 3,250 uh, terawatt hours. So this is a challenge to, 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 to add. When you look at the, the price or the cost of uh, green steel, it's approximately 30 to 50% more expensive than the conventional steel. Uh, this is why the first movers, they are going into niche markets like the aut automotive uh, industry or whiteware, where the cost of the steel is just a small fraction of the product itself. So as a consumer, you would not really bother and uh, just pay a few more dollars or euros uh, for, for the product. Um, so when you look at the, the cost of steel, we talk about approximately 800 US dollars per ton of steel as a hot rolled, rolled coil. Um, it's not a lot, you know, I would say one kilo of steel costs less than a, a liter of bottled mineral water. And um, so it's a, a challenging situation uh, to use something like uh, uh, um, gases uh, to produce uh, a more expensive product. But in the future there is expectations that the CO2 prices which, which are connected to the coal in, this, in the conventional process will rise and the hydrogen uh, price will uh, will be lower in the future. Uh, for that reason, there will also be, de uh, be development in the economies of this process. Look at the iron ore producers. We talk about only a few uh, companies which dominate the, the global iron ore market, with uh, Australia being the largest exporter of iron ore in the world. Um, the largest three companies uh, are mentioned here on the right side. They are all based in Western Australia and they are all based in Perth. And they obviously have also, um, together with their customers, which, are this, which is the steel industry, uh, thoughts about rearranging the value chain of iron, and, iron and steel making, because uh, there's the option to use this um, benefit of having uh, uh, the co-location of green hydrogen and iron ore to produce iron on the spot in Australia, for example, together with the iron ore, which uh, is otherwise just digged and shipped to other places. So. <clears throat> Uh, we would uh, ship direct reduced iron in the form of HBI instead of just exporting iron ore. This is uh, especially interesting for Australia, especially Western Australia and also South Australia because we have huge uh, hydrogen projects there and also the availability of iron ore, especially also magnet magnetite iron ore which is suitable for the DRI processes. But obviously also Australia is in a competition, there are also other places like the Middle East which will um, uh, also uh, uh, go into this, uh, into this direction and it will um, change the, the face of this industry in the future. And with, with this I want to close and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs>